Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we have a fun topic, or at least I think so. One of my viewers actually suggested this idea and I think it's wonderful. We're gonna talk about cat Leia orchids, specifically five things to love about them. Now, of course, these types of videos are personal. You might not like cat Leas, and that's absolutely fine. The following are, in my opinion, five very strong reasons to fall in love with this beautiful family of orchids. So thank you so much for suggesting this topic. I think it's a great idea, and if you guys end up liking this video, I can actually do more because cat Leas, yes, they're currently my favorite family, but they're not the only orchids that I love. I can extend it to other orchids. So with that said, let us start with reason number one. The flowers. I find Calvia orchid flowers generally are some of the most beautiful flowers in the orchid kingdom. And when I say this, I mean the general appeal. Sure, there are other spectacular flowers like the Cycopsis, Paphiopetalums, and other orchids. But if you think about a general appeal that flowers typically have, the Cattleya family does have a very classic feel to it. In the vast majority of cases, the flowers seem very romantic, very appealing. I don't think there is anybody to be absolutely repulsed by the flowers of the Cattleya, like some other orchid flowers can create some strong feelings. Now, this of course can be a good thing or a bad thing. Some would say they're kind of boring. I would rather say that generally they're not displeasing. They're actually very, very appealing. And if you just think about the diversity, there are here and there some representatives to make you say, oh wow, I was not expecting this. Because when I say cat Leia family, I actually do refer to the entire family of hybrids, of related orchids, intergeneric orchids, and so on. But we'll talk about this a little later. Overall, when I think about an orchid flower, I know typically you'd think about a Phalaenopsis, I think about cat Leas. To me, they are more staple-like flowers than Phalaenopsis, which tend to pretty much have the same shape. The cat Leas have a more flowery feeling to it. If you think about the very fluffy, very wavy and lush flowers of some of the species. So the number one reason why I like them is of course the flowers. I am crazy about their flowers and every time one of them opens is just like seeing it for the first time. This is the feeling that I get and it's a wonderful feeling to have a plant or a flower that just puts a smile on your face whenever you see it in bloom. No matter how many times you saw it in bloom before, I'm never bored of them actually. The second very big reason why I love Calia orchids is that the majority of them are actually very fragrant. I'm a person who absolutely loves fragrance. It just brightens my day. It's just a little quirk that I have. And discovering new fragrances is always a journey for me. I also attribute a lot of memories to fragrance. And whenever I detect a certain scent, I'm immediately translocated into that memory. Some people are more visual. I am more the type who clings to fragrances. And luckily, most cat Leas, even if there are no IDs, are fragrant. And just like with the flowers and how they look, I find the fragrance to be a very classical flower fragrance. It's easy to like, it's appealing to the vast majority of people. And even though there is some variety within the fragrance as well, most of them do have a flowery type of fragrance. It's not like the catacetum that smells like a pharmacy, either you love it or hate it. With the cat Leas, it's easy to accept them. They smell like what you would expect. Most of them smell, to me at least, like citronella, like lilies, roses even. Some have subtle hints of some spices, maybe a little pepper, maybe a little mint. But there aren't many who smell like that. Most of them have a sweet, fresh, flowery fragrance to them, which I find generally appealing. Now, again, you can say, no, oh, that's kind of boring. And to some people it might be if you're the type of person who looks for unique fragrances. I don't think cat Leas are necessarily the family in which you will find these scents, but definitely if you are picky about the fragrance and you want to play it safe, the cat Leas is the way to go. So for this reason, I do prefer it to other families. Most cat Leas actually don't have a very, very, very intense fragrance. It's not going to kick you out of the room. There are only a few who do that. So even if I'm not super in love with the fragrance, I know it's not going to bother me overall, but I don't think I've ever been bothered by cat Leas fragrance. Not to the point of actually putting it out of the room. However, there are cat Leas which are not fragrant and that's okay if you're not the fragrance type. Definitely you can find some of these orchids appealing without their fragrance. One of them is this one. 
it's my newest acquisition and I just wanted to show it to you in bloom. This is the uh, Brassolalia Golden Peacock. She's not fragrant as you might expect for a Brassavola hybrid, but isn't she just lovely? She looks like a little star. And of course this color, oh, so yummy. It's a beautiful orangey yellow like I absolutely love. Reason number three is diversity. Not only are Cattleyas different from one another flower-wise, fragrant-wise, color-wise, pattern-wise, but also leaf-wise and pseudobulb-wise. Because Cattleyas actually comprise a lot of different family which can be hybridized together, there are a lot of intergeneric hybrids. Some of them can look quite amazing. Cattleyas can be hybridized with epidendrums and cyclias, the former known Sophronides, the Lalias. There are a few families of orchids that, when hybridized, produce such wonderful, amazing flowers. One of my favorite cross is the Brassavola slash Cattleya cross because, well, Brassavolas are Cattleya family orchids which are fragrant during nighttime and they possess a very, very strong soapy, perfumey type of fragrance that I personally really, really like. And when Brassavolas are used in hybridization, they usually pass on this beautiful fragrance. And not only that, they also pass on their shape. There is some diversity in fragrance as well, but also the orchids can absolutely look different. Yes, they all have canes or pseudobulbs, they are all sympodial, but leaf-wise they can have one, two, or even three, four, five, if we think about the Ivanagara. They can stay more more compact or they can spread rather like a bulb of film and within reason they do really have quite a lot of diversity when it comes to the overall look of the orchid. So in the end my number three reason to love them is the way they look like even without flowers. My number four reason is slightly very personal but I don't think I'm the only one. I think they are very very easy to care for. Now of course each and every one of us has their own weaknesses, right? I cannot grow psychopetalums, what to do? I know a few of my viewers who actually cannot grow felon kids. It has to do with the environment, with the climate, with many many things, but for me, living in a very warm climate, Cattleyas are perfect. Now Cattleyas do require bright bright light, which I can provide, they require warmish temperatures, which I can provide, but they're not finicky at all when it comes to humidity, salt buildup, things of the sorts, they're not finicky orchids. I do believe they are home environment friendly as well. The only requirements is that you have warm temperatures in your home and bright light as much as possible. So I can see how they might not be suited for every home, but I think that for the vast majority of homes who do have a bright location, they're absolutely suited. The number one thing that I think sets them apart from other orchids is the fact that they do not respond to humidity. Well, yes, they do respond, they produce a bit more um, side roots on aerial roots, but overall, if you have 30% humidity but you keep your orchid well hydrated, you should theoretically not have any sorts of troubles with Cattleyas. They are very well adapted to dry conditions, to very hot conditions, they have thick cuticles, they are cam plants as far as research goes, meaning they don't exchange gas in the daytime but rather in the nighttime, so they don't lose water as fast as other orchids, thus making them more tolerant to dry air, drier conditions and things of the sorts. Their roots are not very very sensitive either, within limits of course, it's better not to test it, but if you were to ever compare something like an Oncidium with a Cattleya, the Cattleya is a lot more vigorous. They are very very tolerant to high moisture conditions as well. As you might know, I am using semi-hydro or self-watering pots with them and pretty much the roots of my Cattleya orchids are always kind of moist. As long as they're ventilated, they really have no issue. So it is actually very, very adaptable, very manageable, very friendly to beginners as well, in my opinion. It has its quirks and you first need to understand its growth pattern. And to do so, check the description down below. I'll add my care tutorial and growth pattern video just so you'll learn more about Cattleyas if you're interested. So once you know these basic things about the Cattleyas, I do believe they will not give you as many headaches as Oncidiums typically give us. And reason number five, they are very, very shelf friendly. And as I was saying, they come in many different shapes and sizes. You can pin the pseudobulbs together to save space or train the pseudobulbs to grow in a certain way. 
they don't really have this tendency to lean over or if they do you can correct it by shaping the pseudobulbs you can actually choose those varieties which stay smaller or stay more compact and not only that if let's say within a few years your Calia orchid outgrows her space you can actually divide it, cut it in half, share it with a friend, give it away, uh, sell it, do whatever you feel like doing with one division and keep the other one. Instantly you'll have half of the orchid that you used to have, you'll regain your space and the orchid will be completely fine. This is a perk of sympodials generally, but definitely with Cattleyas you can do so as well. You cannot really do that with a Phalaenopsis or Monopodial generally, right? So overall, if you pay attention to maintenance and you choose those particular Cattleyas which have tendencies that favor you, you can have such an easy shelf life with Cattleya orchids. And overall, I do think they are well suited to shelves because of their variety and because of their nature. And there we have it. These are all of my reasons. Of course, there are probably other smaller reasons. But yes, I do tend to love whatever does better in my environment. If I were to choose between a Calia and a Miltoniopsis, I would choose the Calia any day of the week, obviously. If you know me for a long time, you might know that Oncidiums used to be my favorites in the days when they were more accessible to me rather than Cattleyas. I didn't have many Cattleyas and I still love Oncidiums. But with them, the intergenerics, I have to be careful what I choose because some of them really don't like the heat. And of course that frustrates me a little bit. So I'm forced to choose Cattleyas over Oncidiums, but I don't regret it because there is just such variety. And I really like the fact that they don't give me issues. I love challenges, but some days I just like to look at pretty stuff without having to go through loops and hoops for them, right? Sometimes all we want is a plant that blooms, smells nice, grows nice and doesn't really pose any issues. And that for me happens to be the Cattleya. So alrighty guys, let me know down below if you've enjoyed this format of this type of video. If you have other reasons why you love Cattleya's, put them down below. And if you like to see this type of video but with other types of orchids, again let me know down below in the description. Obviously they will not be my favorite family because this is the Cattleya, but there are many many other orchids that I love for many different reasons. So you know the drill, if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up, if you hated it give it a thumbs down, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials and suggestions that my viewers send in and if you'd like YouTube to notify you whenever I upload a new video just turn on all notifications for my channel and with that said I'll see you guys next time bye